Hello, and welcome to a special segment of Spotlighting Paradise. I'm your host, Henry White. My guest today is Bryant Robertson, uh, from, who's the co-founder of Holacracy, and Ingrid Bredenberg, who is the founder of Bredenberg Associates. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I couldn't help but notice when I looked on your website that it said uh, you're a recovering CEO. I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it took me a while to figure out my bio. and uh, Right. You know. I've been a CEO in the past, and, and I'm grateful to not hold that, that job title. I, I can certainly <laughs> understand that. And uh, just by the way, welcome back to Western Mass. Thank you. And welcome back to the Valley. So we're going to just jump right in here. Um, why don't you tell the folks, what is holacracy? Yeah. Uh, it's a new approach to running an organization. And uh, going to the comment about being a recovering CEO, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's an approach that doesn't rely on the traditional management hierarchy that we're used to. Uh, but relies on other ways of getting control, getting alignment, getting organization, all the fundamentals that you need to run a business successfully. Um, we assume that the only way to get that naturally is the management hierarchy that we're used to, uh, but that's not actually the case. There are other ways of getting alignment and control, and, and we see it in, in, in your city here, right? There's, there's mm -hmm. no CEO, um, but yet... Per se. Yeah, well, no, yeah. Right. I mean, most of our transactions day to day, we're, we're organizing, we're, we're working together, we're collaborating, and yet nobody's directing all that action. And so Holacracy is an approach to running an organization that's more like what we see in a, in a city. It's, it's, it's allowing more of a free market basis and mm. allowing individual autonomy and more individual voice and, and collaboration. Uh, and a different way of, of getting alignment and control. So it's, it's a new, we call it a new social technology or a new operating system for running a company. Right, and th thanks for saying because I was going to ask you about that. I saw somewhere where it did say that it was like an operating system for organizations. Yeah, 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 it really is. It's a great metaphor. Uh, just, just like any computer has an operating system mm -hmm. underneath of it that uh, you know, kind of helps different apps work together, collaborate, align with the, the overall system's resource allocation needs and all that. Uh, I think our organizations also have operating systems, and we often don't choose one very consciously. We just get stuck with the default assumption mm. that we want this top-down management hierarchy, and, and there are other operating systems. There are other options, and some of them, I'd say, are perhaps a bit of an upgrade for many organizations. Right. And what kind of, I, I assume you work with both businesses and quote-unquote organizations, but what kind of business and organizations would be most likely to benefit from um, installing or implementing the holacracy philosophy? Yeah, it's it's really broad. Uh, it's been something that's actually surprised me a little bit. Uh, we see for-profit, non-profit, uh, larger, smaller, um, uh, uh, more purpose-driven organizations, uh, more high-tech uh, manufacturing, uh, across the board. So, mm -hmm. for example, um, the founder of Twitter, Evan Williams, his new company, it's a Silicon Valley startup they run with Holacracy. Uh, on the other side... Uh, as, uh, hold on one yeah. second. Did you just say the founder of Twitter? Yeah, one of the founders of one Twitter. One of the founders of Twitter. new company with Holacracy. Yeah, oh, okay. So. That's... Yeah, it's it is. It's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Uh, another one, uh, if you've ever shopped at Zappos.com. Zappos, uh, huge. Holacracy, yeah. And, and very different companies. You know, small, growing, high-tech, Silicon Valley, you know, a company versus uh, online retailer that's that's more in the the fashion uh, industry and all that mm -hmm. uh, versus uh, we have some manufacturing firms uh, it's it's really it's across the map wow so give an example i mean i know you just talked about zappos and and the twitter uh gentleman there give an example of how holacracy has changed or impact an, an organization yeah yeah um, Actually, I think uh, one of the really cool uh, stories that's just recent for me is uh, one of the uh, the director of HR and one of our clients, um, who initially was really uh, skeptical of mm -hmm. Um She it was I mean, they have a really cool company. It's a new way of running things. It was she had good reason to be skeptical. It's different, uh, but over the the six months we've worked with the company now. Um, She's really gotten a, a taste of, of what this has done for employees, and, and she's in HR for a reason. She, she really, uh, she wants to help people. She likes mm -hmm. people. She's, and uh, she actually got on, on stage at one of the company's all-hands meetings uh, when they were first rolling this out and announcing it after she had done it for a few months in her department. And she actually uh, broke out in tears in front of the whole company. And, really? And the re it was really, really powerful. And the reason was... Um, the, the, as she told me that the impact this has, the potential on employees, the, the potential to 
unlock and liberate mm. their own energy, their own passion and motivation, mm. uh, to give them a voice, to actually give them a, a way to, to influence the organization in, in new ways, things that they, they haven't been able to, to um, you know, actually bring forth and get change enacted before, now they can. Um, and that's that's a lot of what I see. It it's unlocking and liberating the potential of all of the people in the organization right. to actually contribute at new levels um, and get more engaged. Right. And it sounds like it's a spreading the power, so to speak, as well, or distributing the power. Or yeah, distrib I think I saw something that says distributive authority. It's exactly what. Yeah, it's a distributive. Am I on the right track system. here, a little bit, Brian? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. just check it. Just check it. <laughs> That's awesome. Talk a little yeah. bit about that, though. Yeah, it's one of the cool mm -hmm. things about it. Uh, it. It breaks down and distributes authority, which, mm -hmm. ironically, is what any organization needs to do. Even in a conventional structure, people need to know what decisions can I make. Absolutely. Well, who do I need to go to for what? Uh, you need clarity. And our conventional approach to organization rarely gets clarity. So we have these big painful meetings where everybody's sitting around forever trying to come to consensus on something mm -hmm. because we don't know who calls the ball, who makes the decision, what do we expect of them to go with it. Uh, Holacracy gets clarity on all that, and it does it by getting clear distributed authority. Wow. So instead of just the manager acting as kind of a feudal lord handing down grants of very muddy, very unclear authority, uh, there's a governance process that actually breaks it up and distributes it and gets clear. So wow. Everyone in the organization knows exactly what their authority is, yeah. and there is no manager who can trump that authority. Wow. They know this is my authority, mm -hmm. and they know what's expected of them along with it. So if, if you have this authority, then we need to expect some things from you. Absolutely. And those go with it, and all of that gets clearly defined, and it evolves continually. Wow. And, and I would imagine that relieves the tension in the organization as well, or potential tension, just because of those yeah. different roles and Absolutely. responsibilities. Absolutely, yeah, it does. And, and actually, tension is one of the inputs into the whole process, because when we feel tension in an organization, it's often mm -hmm. a clue that something could be better than it is. You know, there's a gap between where we are and where we could be. Right. And and we can use that to fuel change, to, to figure out how do we need to change things around here to make things better. Right. You know, and that's the, the whole input to the whole process. Absolutely. Speaking of around here, Ingrid, you have been our local uh, champion liaison in hosting these Holacracy taster events. Uh -huh. um, and besides that, what what has or what is your role with Holacracy? Yeah, well, as you know, this is my 25th year doing consulting work. So mm -hmm. I have worked in many different sectors with lots of great ideas. And my goal is to bring the latest and the most proven approaches to my clients so that they can run their, their businesses more effectively and have fulfill their purpose and have more fun. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came across Holacracy, I really got that this could, in fact, attend to so much of the pain that I see in organizations. I work with a lot of very enlightened leaders, people who are mm -hmm. really ready to make change. And what has happened more than a few times is that leader has built a beautiful culture that has, has a wonderful organization, and then they leave and a lot of that will fall apart because it depended on what is known as the heroic leader. So what I see in Holacracy is the opportunity for people, as, as Brian expressed, to really bring their full self to their work mm. and not only fulfill the organizational purpose, but fulfill their own. Absolutely. And that's what's so exciting. I work with a lot of boards of directors and people come because they believe in the organization and then they get burnt out Absolutely. because they get dependent on so much and there's no way to keep the flow going. Mm. So my wish is that more and more people and more and more business leaders and community leaders understand that this is, this is another way to run the organization where you can actually run, do more with less, mm. have more fun per minute, and have people really uh, know that their efforts are going somewhere and they're being well utilized. Absolutely, and that's great. And who wouldn't want to do that? Do more with less exactly. and have more fun while doing it. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's great. And you have been, I mean, you have a proven track record mm. um, of working with leaders and boards and organizations. And so this is, and I'm speaking um, <laughs> myself as well as some of the other folks that know you is mm. another one of the awesome uh, programs and, and philosophy that you're bringing oh, to us you. here in, in Western Mass. Um, so for the folks out here who are listening and tuning in and say, wow, that sounds very interesting. I'm a leader <laughs> or I'm a owner of a small business. How can I... Um, get started with this holacracy. I mean, what's, what's the first step? How do they get started, Brian? 
Yeah, um, for a, a business owner or an executive team that wants a taste of it, uh, I think of it, the metaphor I use, it's like a, a new sport. It's a new way of, of playing the game of business. Mm -hmm. and there's no better way to learn a new sport or a new game than to dive in and play it. Absolutely. So what we typically do with an executive team is actually just come in for a, a day or two and give them an actual experience of what it would be like to run their business with this system. Mm. And we put their real issues, the stuff they're wrestling with through this process, and at the end of that, that couple of days, they've got a really tangible sense to compare Here's how Holacracy would help them organize and deal with these issues versus what they've done before. Right. And from there, if they want to move forward, then there's all different paths uh, forward for you know various sizes, types of organizations. There's no one right answer. Right. Uh, but what we try to leave that couple of day taste with is a clear path for them on how they would roll this out in their company. Absolutely. And then it can be tailor made to their specific exactly. needs. Yeah. Well, great. You heard it, folks. If you want to get involved or you want some more information about Holacracy, you can go to the website. I encourage you to do so. It's holacracy.org. And also, if you want to contact Ingrid and get in for more information from a local standpoint or just to talk to her, um, send her an email. It's at ingrid at bredenbergassociates.com. Uh, thanks again, Brian, for coming and, and uh, dropping by and talking to us. And thank you, Ingrid, for being a facilitator and making this happen. We appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to, to more Holacracy uh, happenings here in the Valley and across the country. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank yous for tuning in. Until another edition of Spotlighting Paradise, keep peace and blessings and keep the faith.